We're going to start this project by rough cutting these boards here at the chop saw. If you don't have one of these, you can definitely use a hand saw just as easily. The next step is going to be to clean up some edges over here at the table saw so that I can get these pieces glued together. Now that we've got our two gluing surfaces cleaned up, it's really just a matter of gluing these together. And I'm simply going to butt joint these together like this and add some glue. If you felt the need to run some dowels or biscuits in there to strengthen that joint, you certainly could. So I've got eight, all my pieces kind of grouped together. We'll just add some glue and get these in clamps. Now if you want to deal with this squeeze out, it's easy to do right now if you just get a wet rag wipe that off. One thing to note, you put your clamps on and it starts to fold from the pressure. Just add some weight. I've got actual weights here, some pieces of steel that have been welded together for something that I've forgotten. You can use paint cans, really anything heavy. Just get these things to lay flat long enough for the glue to set up. After the glue dried, I took these pieces over to the table saw and cleaned them up a little bit. These are the side pieces and they're five inches tall by five inches wide. Now these measurements, you can change them, do anything you want. There's no set rules. The last thing I need to do on the front pieces, which are six and a half inches wide, is I need to mark a spot on the wall here so that I can cut my roof line. Now my roof's going to be at 30 degrees just because that's what works with this wood and it's easy to do on this uh, chop saw but you could do any angle you want. So what I want to do is use my side pieces here and basically just make a mark where the side pieces meet up with the front and the back. This mark right here is going to be the beginning of my cut. So I'm going to get rid of this piece here. I'm ready to glue the walls together and I'm just going to use simple butt joints. Put some glue on this face here. You'll notice when I put this together I've intentionally made it so that the side walls are, the top of them are flush with where this angle of this roof beats. That way when I put a roof on here I don't have to worry about angling this piece here to make everything match. Then I just want to check it for square. And of course it's pallet wood, so square is a pretty loose term. While this is drying, I'm going to measure a piece for this bottom, and that's just going to be a scrap piece of wood. It doesn't have to be anything fancy because it's not going to be seen.
After this glue has had a chance to set up, you could go back through and add some finish nails if you felt so inclined, or screws, whatever. Generally wood glue is plenty, but I know some people like to have a nail in there just to feel better about it. If we turn our attention for a minute to the roof, this is where you can use a little bit of creativity in determining what material you want to use. You could go the route of metal. I've got some old sheet metal. You could use an old cake pan or a frying pan. You could cut a soup can down the middle and spread it out. Use that as your roofing material. If you didn't want metal, you could certainly go with a simple wood roof. Cut that to size. You could even start to think about plastic. This is some vinyl fencing that you could cut into strips. Make a roof. If you happen to have a broken lid on a tote, that would work as well. If you had some old shingles around, you could even take a tab off of a shingle and nail it in place. So really, the options are kind of limitless, depending on what material you have around. I think for this one, I'm going to use some of this sheet metal. Now, of course, no birdhouse is complete without a hole for the birds to get in, even though this is decorative and there's really not going to be any birds in here. We'll put a hole in there anyway. I'm using a two-inch hole. This is a hole saw. And I think I'm going to put mine kind of centered between this tree here and the edge. Of course, you could move it dead center if you were going to put this outside and you were afraid that the house might lean. We're also going to put a perch in here as well. So keeping with this dead tree look, I've decided to use a branch from one of my trees in the yard. Now here's a little tip. Make it easy on yourself. Find a branch that matches a drill bit that you've got. And then, get this as straight as possible. If you have a drill press, obviously, that's the best tool. And I do, but that's okay, it's a branch. How straight can that be? Now I'm going to sand this whole birdhouse before I put anything permanent in there.
I'm going to go ahead and put a finish on my birdhouse before I actually put the roof on because that roof is the last step and then I'm done. You may notice here that I painted the inside of my birdhouse with some flat black spray paint. Mostly just because this was all scrap wood, it was pretty beat up, and I thought all of that stuff in the inside was a little bit distracting. So I just put down a quick coat of black paint, everything kind of disappears at that point. For mine, I'm going to put on this Helmsman Spar Urethane, but you could paint these, you could leave them as is, whatever you want to do. Cutting down these nails for the roof, and because I'm going to drill a pilot hole, I don't need this sharp end on there. So I'm going to pre-drill these holes in that wood just because I don't want this to split. Now I don't have to go the full depth of the nail. You can put a little flag on your drill bit if you want to make sure you don't go too far. But if you're, just, if you're paying attention, you should be okay. And I don't need to go the full I don't need to go the full distance. Just enough to get a nail in there and hold it secure. As you're driving these nails, you want to be feeling to make sure that this nail doesn't start to come out. Because once you sink that, it's going to be almost impossible to pull that out. And I'm really only concerned if it comes out on the exterior of the house. I can feel that one starting to come out. That wasn't planned either. So I'm not really sure what happened in here. It might be something to do with the grain. So this one, not really going to be structural, but I want to use this existing hole. So I'm really going to exaggerate this hole. And this one will go in at an angle and won't finish coming out the front. So there's a slight hairline crack right here where that nail tried to work its way out. Because I didn't push that all the way in, it didn't break the surface. I could easily take some of that spar urethane and put another coat on here and that would disappear. But I can also just tap that back in and it blends with all the other imperfections of this wood. So that's it for this project. Hope you've enjoyed it. Maybe learn something. I like building these when I don't really have anything else to do or sometimes instead of the things that I need to be doing. Because they're quick, they're easy, and you can use your imagination and it's always pretty cool to see how things come out. Well, thanks for watching.